question for Go Behind the Iron Curtain USA. What about this uh, Banking and Currency Committee? Uh, and we've had uh, Congressman Gonzalez on, who's one of your colleagues, and he sees the world very clearly and sees the power structures at work. And I'm sure you have a clear picture of this also. Is this one of the reasons you became a libertarian instead of a Republican? Well, it's certainly one of the reasons why I got involved in politics, because I was very fascinated with economics and particular, particularly monetary policy. And um, if you think about it, money is pretty important. If you look at all transactions, whether you're buying something or selling your services, one half of all economic transactions is the monetary unit. So if somebody has control over the value of the monetary unit, they control every transaction. Therefore, if you have an institution, such as a government ordained bank, like a central bank, like our Federal Reserve, if they have absolute monopoly control over the value of that currency, they control everything in the economy. It becomes a form of a government regulated economy. It doesn't become socialism, but the money obviously is socialistic in that the government controls it. So if they increase the supply, the value goes down. If they tighten the supply, interest rates go up. So it's tremendous economic power. And the insiders, those who know what the policy is, literally can benefit. They don't stuff their pockets and line their pockets with cash. That's not the way it happens. But those who are in the inside and knowledgeable will benefit because they know which direction interest rates are going and which way the economy is going. And uh, if you look at the members of the Federal Reserve, you find out that they don't ask people like me to be on the Federal Reserve, even though I've had experience on studying the issue and been on the banking committee. They ask only the people who are casually referred to as the insiders, those from Wall Street and the banking industry, the Paul Volkers and the Alan Greenspans of the world, they're on the inside. They know how to deal with the establishment and they get these positions and therefore it is a tremendous amount of economic power falls in the hands of what we call the Open Market Committee, the Federal Open Market Committee. They control from day to day the supply of money. They become the legal counterfeiters. You know, if you and I had control of the printing press, we could do a lot of, a lot of things, you know, self-serving. That's what happens when the politicians create the central bank that, get, that control the money. Now, this control of the central bank and the money goes on regardless of which party is in power, right? It never changes. You know, uh, uh, they change a person here and there, but it's always the insiders. It's always from the same group. So if you have a Republican as president or the Democrats, they're going to get the same appointments. Appointments never change. This can be said about the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of Treasury and, and the Federal Reserve Board members. They all come from the same group. And even though, I guess naively, I th was hopeful that the same group of individuals would not have as much power under, Ron, under Ronald Reagan. But, you know, I was there, I witnessed it, and of course that led to my disenchantment, my disappointment, enough to the point where I just said, I've had enough, and then I left the Republican Party and joined the Libertarian Party with the idea that you cannot trust Republicans to be independent of the system either, although Ronald Reagan led us to believe that he would be independent. <laughs> record for civil liberties for libertarians, uh, to my mind, is very good. Um, and even, uh, I think it was the, the last interview we did with a libertarian candidate for president said that he would abolish the CIA, the FBI, and the uh, uh, IRS. Do you hold those same positions? Yes, I do, because, uh, you know, most of our history we didn't, didn't have those institutions. The FBI came in uh, during the First World War, and Interestingly enough, the one thing that Woodrow Wilson did, he used the FBI to spy on American citizens and actually arrest them if they disagreed with his foreign policy about going to war in Europe. And isn't it interesting how recent they used it in the Vietnam era? Democrats used it there, and Republicans used the FBI to spy on a hundred different groups in this country, including the churches, who disagreed with the policy 
in uh, Central America. It almost looks like the FBI was designed to spy on Americans who might be disagreeing uh, with policy, especially the foreign policy. So the FBI, although I don't think I could condemn everything they've ever done, because I'm sure uh, some of the investigations and investigation of crime uh, has been beneficial, but that could be accomplished through Justice Department within our states. We wouldn't reject that pr uh, portion of it. But I think the, the FBI has uh, kept and continues to keep a lot of records on a lot of individuals. The CIA has only been here since 1947. Their record is lousy. I mean, just think of the CIA used by the Democratic uh, administration to murder Diem and escalate the war in Vietnam. And here we have a Republican using the CIA to sell weapons to the Ayatollah, to raise funds, deal in drugs, go to Central America, fight wars that have not been approved by the people or the Congress. So we see the CIA as very, very detrimental, skirting the law. And here we had Casey proposing a super CIA. He thought there was too much... Uh, 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 control over the CIA that existed that congressmen now occasionally ask questions and they don't ask enough. So they were talking about a super CIA. The CIA was used in uh, a bad policy in, in Cuba. Uh, we think that intelligence gathering is permissible to defend this country. But up until 1947, it was done as a military operation. If you needed to know whether there were troops massing for an invasion, that the CIA ought to know about, or the, uh, we ought to know, get that information, uh, have that intelligence. Uh, but now in this age, especially in the modern age, I mean, we don't even need to have somebody over in Europe or in, in the Soviet Union. We don't even need to send uh, powers in an airplane over Europe. We have satellites. You can practically uh, watch an individual walking around on the street with the technology available. So, so I would say even modern technology has uh, absolutely moved us into an age where we ought to become more modern and get away from this uh, CIA operative snooping around, actually causing a lot more trouble than good. Does that include all these... Uh interventions and covert actions and surrogate uh, mercenaries which we're using in Central Absolutely. America? Absolutely, we would do away with that. But that doesn't mean that we would <clears throat> complacently say that we shouldn't have a national defense. If we're concerned about the spread of communism, one of the first things we as libertarians would do would be to stop the funding of the communists. You know, we're still sending money to the communists. Increased under the Reagan administration. It's unbelievable what we've been, but we've been doing. But if there is a threat to our national security, rather than using these secretive operatives going around and murdering and picking and choosing our personal dictators that serve our banking and business interests, it should be done through the Congress. Congress should know about it. It's the people's money and it's the kids' lives that are being dealt with. So therefore it should be open. If our national security is threatened, Congress ought to have a vote on it. Never secretly with the power of a president to wage war. That's a very dangerous thing to happen. Question four. Go behind the Iron Curtain, USA.